This curb log topic was suggested by Alorius. If you'd like to suggest topics for videos like these, and if you want to hear me record them in my community Discord server before they release, consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash curbifer. Uh, so normally under most circumstances I would do a, uh, a little musical lyrical intro or whatever, uh, but not this time because uh, this is a musical episode in general, everybody. Uh, so um, the, uh, the question that I got from Alorius is uh, my favorite video game tunes and their effect on my life. So I've been playing video games since I was uh, in my early single digits. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to uh, <laughs> um, be blessed with both an NES and a Genesis when I was very young, thanks to my sister uh, sisters actually having them and playing them quite a bit. So uh, there was that. And so I, I've had video game tunes just kind of ingrained in my being for as long as I can remember, honestly. And uh, I can remember... Since the beginning of my life, they uh, have constantly been, um, you know, the, the the sort of soundtrack to my life as a whole, as it were. Um, I'm sure if you know if you've been following my work for a while, you know that I've had an active imagination for uh, the length of my existence, <laughs> and um, throughout that time, uh, yeah, video game music and characters and stories and motifs and just everything about them have just kind of been. Uh, a, a part of my lifeblood, um, and have now gone into my professional career and everything. But when I was a young lad and just a you know an overly active, uh, imaginatory weirdo, um, yeah, mu video game music kind of existed in my day to day. Not even just as I was playing it, but just in the way that I went through life. Um, I knew I was obsessed with video game music when um, situational themes would just sort of play, like, as I, uh, would go to various locations. Um, as a perfect example, um, long before I was going to college in New York City, uh, just this is like an offhanded kind of case, um, I, uh, I didn't really like going to New York City that much, uh, before I eventually started living there and going to college there and everything and etc. Um, but I remember, um, I learned what the word metropolis was. Uh, and all I could think of, of course, was Metropolis Zone from Sonic 2. Um, so every time I would go to uh, New York City, it was always in my head. The Metropolis Zone. Every time. And that would just be looping infinitely as I'm on the... That, that was the theme, like the, the um, overworld theme of me just moving around Manhattan. <laughs> With my mom or dad or whatever, you know, probably on her way to the uh, Metro. Polis Zone, the Metropolis Zone, that has existed in my mind for like close to 30 years at this point. <laughs> so, um, similarly, and I think that uh, Banjo-Kazooie can kind of hang its hat on this, but um, there was... Uh, there was this kind of advent I have of um, when I would go to certain places in general, uh, like with New York City as an example, they would have a designated kind of piece of theme music, usually from a video game, um, that would be permanently married to that place, um, as if, like, I were the protagonist of my own video game, which I did often, often, often pretend that I was, uh, long before I actually was with the Tome game, obviously. <laughs> um... I, uh, so, so, so yeah, the, the Metropolis Zone was the theme of the streets of New York City. And then, um, I don't know why exactly this one started, but, um, Heggy, the, the, the big chicken lady from, uh, Banjo Tooie, uh, that owns the shed where you hatch the little question mark eggs, um, Heggy's egg shed, uh, became the theme of me going to McDonald's. Um, maybe because it was just like food and, related somehow, I guess, tangentially, but every time I'd go into a McDonald's, I'd be hearing this You're gonna eat some disgusting shit today. <laughs> that was, yeah, for a long time, that was, uh, of all of the amazing Banjo-Kazooie music, um, yeah, that, that was one that weirdly stuck around for that. Uh, not to say that the rest of it didn't, but, um, yeah, and I think that also kind of in tandem with that whole deal of um, every location was like, you know, a particular level in this, you know, giant overworld that was my life. Um, I, I really played pretend quite a bit, uh, through my single digits and even into my early tens. <laughs> so, um, as a result of that, 
um, you know, e everything, everything in my life was like a video game level. It was, it was kind of ridiculous. It was a little bit embarrassing to, to be honest. Um, I know that there was, um, there was a time in particular where, uh, everywhere I went, like something, somehow, somebody was going to be a boss. Like I would just be like in my, not, not actually act it. Well, sometimes I'm sure I would act it out, but, uh, for the most part, it was just, um, uh, like, like just me imagining having some kind of boss battle with something or somebody. And I remember for a really long time, uh, specifically the Super Mario Brothers 2, uh, like when you're fighting Birdo or any of the bosses in that, um, I say Birdo because that's as far as I would get up to because it was awful at Mario 2. Uh, and specifically the, uh, the Super Mario All-Stars version of that theme. Uh, that was, that was the one for me. <laughs> Um, so anytime I'd be having one of these like imaginary boss battles, it was which you know is not really much of a song to be honest, but somehow it just got I, I got wholly addicted to that. <laughs> and uh, and actually, funnily enough, this this is gonna sound kind of unbelievable coming from the Mario RPG guy, um, but I think that actually Mario All Stars. Uh, has the most childlike nostalgia feeling that I get from any Mario soundtrack. Uh, like, even more so than Mario RPG. Yeah, d shocking to admit, but... Um, back, actually, when I was streaming a lot of the, um, the animation that I was doing for the, uh, the Tome game, uh, enemy characters, all the Kickstarter stuff and everything, I do recall playing, um, the Mario All-Stars OSD, because it's not very long. I remember playing that, like, quite a bit, uh, you know, back-to-back -back and everything, um, because I was way into that. Um, although, speaking of, uh, Mario music in particular, so, uh, one of my extremely early, um, internet, like, really, really early internet, uh, experiences back in the day, uh, was collecting midis of, uh, video game music. So, and the day, th those of you out there, the day is long before it was so easy to look up literally any, um, video game soundtrack you could possibly imagine, uh, imagine and just have it as, you know, an album or, you know, being able to legally download stuff or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was, uh, people would create MIDI files, uh, of video game music. And, uh, Mario RPG, uh, BGM was some of the first stuff that I ever collected as MIDI files that I downloaded. Like, the first, like, actual things that I downloaded off of the internet ever were MIDIs of the Mario RPG soundtrack. And funny story... Um, this, uh, track that you're hearing right now is not, in fact, from Mario RPG. It is actually, uh, it, it's a, it's a tune created by, uh, a dude who goes by, uh, Mick Vaffy. Um, it was posted on every site you could possibly imagine that had, uh, Mario RPG music, and, uh, this would always be listed as the intro, uh, which was originally the... Uh, but I'm like, that's not the same tune. This is clearly a different tune. Oh, maybe it's like a remix or something, even though it's not even close to being the same tune at all. What is it? Turns out I found out, like, probably about half my lifetime later that it was just inspired by Mario RPG. Um, I tracked down McVaffey, and uh, I actually licensed and bought, and I think I even, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look back at the paperwork, but I think I own this song. Because <laughs> uh, it was... Um, it was something that I had for years of my life, and I'm like, I don't know what this tune is. It's clearly not actually from Mario RPG, but I love it so much. Uh, and uh, now I got to actually put it in my own game, which is kind of an amazing uh, milestone for me. So, but uh, yeah, I, um, uh, I I saw I, I spent quite a, a bit of time on uh, VGMusic.com. Uh, that was a huge uh, you know resource for me collecting you know, a lot of my early, early video game music back in the day. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I do remember in particular, this is, this is one actually kind of cute thing, um, and this, this goes back to that earlier portion. Um, so, uh, the people that I went to school with that, uh, were all my closest friends that actually were kind of the, the basis for a lot of the, um, the extremely early versions of the Balancing Act characters. Um, I remember, uh, I, I was obsessed with Mega Man 2, uh, for, you know, many, many years at that point. I loved the music of that game. And so what I did was, I, uh, I decided to kind of assign each of the different, like, Robot Master themes, uh, to be, like, the themes of each of the, the, the friends of mine, um... 
And and uh, long before, long before Okusenmon existed, and long before I even knew that that was a thing, uh, I actually picked Dr. Wily's Castle Stage 1 from Mega Man 2 to be the theme of my own character. Uh, so, uh, you know, that... and. Selflessly, just because I, I just happened to think like it was a really, really cool theme. It wasn't because I knew anything, you know, special about it. There wasn't anything special about it yet. Not yet. Um, and then years later, I guess somebody else felt the same way and decided to do the uh, the lyrical version of it with uh, Omoide no Oksenman uh, on Nico Nico Doga. But, uh, yeah, um,. I, I do recall uh, I, I assigned like each of the Mega Man 2 themes to a different character, but actually, uh, funnily enough, I um, I made an exception, uh, and this is kind of a funny story for uh, this kind of goes into the the TTA connection because this is the the really early days of eventually leading into me creating uh, TTA. Um, I actually had uh, the Mega Man 3 intro theme uh, was. Um, the theme of uh, the water elemental character, which was also Alpha in in, uh, in TTA, um, and that was also why you could even notice in some uh, episodes of TTA where Kerber first fighting, I used remixes of Doctor Wily's Castle um, as uh, as like my battle theme, and uh, in the season two finale, you could even I, I even did this in the April Fool's version that I just put out a little while ago. I used a remix of the Mega Man three intro theme um, because of that same connection. Uh, so, uh, and I always still really liked that theme, and there, there was even particularly, there was one MIDI of it that I have, um, that I still own, that was a really cool arrangement of it, because some people actually would do cool arrangements of, um, you know, video game music specifically, like, in their MIDIs. Um, I remember in particular there was, like, a, like, a rock, a hard rock, like, kind of Smash Brothers style version of, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, oh god, uh, Delfino Plaza from Super Mario Sunshine. Um, and actually, while I was on, uh, this kind of goes into the next sort of area, when I was on the TV Tome forum and I was meeting all the people that eventually became the basis of the, uh, Tome characters, at that time, because of my obsession with, uh, VGMusic.com, excuse me, I, uh, I had a whole repertoire of different video game music in particular that I, like, you know, just knew from just listening to it for, you know, the years leading up to that point. So this was, like, 2003, I think, by this time. And I remember uh, when I was creating the very first versions of the TTA characters, like those colored pencil kind of sketches of them that, you know, are, are back around somewhere, uh, I came up with what I wanted each of the different characters' um, themes to be. Uh, there's only a few that I remember for sure. I do recall that I made that uh, Delfino Plaza rock remix into Suzuku's theme. And um, I made uh, the I forget how to pronounce it. It's like it's like a like a Roman sounding kind of name, but um, the the battle theme from uh, Hollow Bastion from Kingdom Hearts, um, Kingdom Hearts One, because that was the only one that we had back then. It was that long ago, everybody. Um, yeah, I had uh, uh, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Scherzo di Notte. I don't know how to actually pronounce that correctly. That's uh, I'm reading the way that it looks to my stupid English speaking brain, but. Um, that was, uh, Game Craze's first theme, and I never, I don't think I ever actually used that in TTA for GC at any point, but, um, yeah, I came up with ones like that for all of the, the early TTA characters and everything, and, um, most of them I didn't end up actually using in the show, <laughs> uh, sad to say, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, uh, and then actually kind of also going into that same, uh, era of when I was developing the story of TTA and the characters and everything, uh, around that same time, I started to uh, move from midis and collecting just midis. Uh, then it was actually becoming a little bit more easy, more easy, a little bit easier. Jesus Christ, you know, say um, to uh, to collect MP3s of, uh, of video game music and just music in general. You know, this is this is when stuff like Kazaa and LimeWire and all these like horrible like you know virus catching uh, you know. Uh, 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 downloading, uh, to you know, torrents type programs were becoming a lot more popular, and people were, you know, downloading MP3s of stuff all over the place. But there were some websites that I found um, that had um, not like every bit of video game music ever. Usually, they would have specific stuff. But uh, I recall a lot of the the earliest earliest um, uh, uh, MP3s of video game music that I started uh, collecting at the time. Um, it was a site. I think it was like. Proto Man's like Mega Man 
central site or some something like that. It was something really basic like that. Like just like like not, not it wasn't a it wasn't a popular website like um you know like Mega Man Network or any of that kind of stuff. It was just a little personal site, but they had um collection of MP3s from specifically uh Mega Man Seven, Mega Man Eight, uh, and Rockman Battle and Chase, which was a racing uh Mega Man game, a kart racer game for I think the PS1, if I'm not mistaken, that never came out uh in the US as far as I know. Um, and that was my first kind of exposure to that was so that's the reason why oh and also I found somewhere uh, I can't recall the name of this website but I found a lot of um, BGM from Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 8 so, so a lot of 7 and 8 in particular was kind of the <laughs> the the carried motif at that time but um, I uh, yeah a, a lot of the like early early episodes of TTA um, I uh, yeah, I, I got like a lot of music from specifically Mega Man Seven, Mega Man Eight, and uh, and Final Fantasy Seven, and a little tiny bit of, of Final Fantasy Eight, and uh, quite a bit of Rockman Battle and Chase. By the time I got up to the um, the Z Tournament storyline, um, so uh, that's that's why in those early episodes there was a lot of the same uh, you know like tracks just re being repeated over and over and over because that's really all I had at the time. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, and I think also, oh yes, actually kind of in tandem with that too, I, ha I had um, uh, uh, the music from the Mega Man, um, the arcade fighter games, which were, uh, uh, what, what, the, what the hell were they called? There was two of them, there were two like kind of arcade Mega Man games, uh, oh yeah, the fi yeah, the fighters, yes, and um, yeah, those two games I used, which is the reason why like the very first piece of music in TTA that you hear uh, beyond the intro was, um, like, Dive Man's theme. Not, like, I, that even, it was, like, one of my favorite themes or anything, it just, like, I don't know, I just picked it. I was like, yeah, sure, this'll work for just, you know, random BGM of Alpha heading into the, you know, the little area to meet up with the others and stuff, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so a lot of the, a lot of the early stuff I was collecting, it was all, um, you know, those, those kind of games and everything. Then, um, I started going to, um, a forum that was called the Fallout Shelter. Uh, this was, like, this would have been probably early 2004, I think, was around this time. And, um, around that same time, I was starting to find, um, other, other websites. I think that maybe Galbadia Hotel, which was a big, um, kind of notorious website that had, like, every video game and anime soundtrack in existence. So by that time, I was starting to branch out into, um, you know, oh, I can find, you know, music from, like, anything that I'm watching or anything that I'm playing and use any of that. Um, eventually, I was I was getting my hands on actual Mega Man Battle Network uh, and Mega Man X music that I used quite a bit. Um, so anything that you were here, if you go back and listen to those, um, the, uh, the soundtracks of those early TTA episodes... You will basically be hearing the soundtrack to my life, uh, kind of in tandem with it. it basically, it, yeah, the OST of of, uh, of all of TTA is kind of chronicling like what a lot of not all of of my musical taste, but at least as far as like video game music and even some anime music as well, uh, kind of goes into. Um, over time, uh, I was meeting people uh, on the Fallout Shelter and uh, other places, other like forums that I was going to and everything. Um, where, uh, I had other people that would actually recommend music to me and give me, like, big, giant, like, you know, tons of music from different things. Um, I remember, uh, actually, uh, Mr. OMA, uh, who was the basis of the character Oma, one of the other agents that was supposed to be a big character in Season 4, he gave me this gigantic zip folder of, like, music from, like, Resident Evil and, uh, you know, um, uh, Devil May Cry, uh, a lot of, like, wrestling themes... Um, you know, all sorts of stuff from all random different sources. A lot of uh, various, like, JRPG themes from different things that I'd never played to this day. Um, there are actually quite a few uh, that I got obsessed with um, that to this day, I, 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 I've never actually played the games that they're, they're from. Um, but uh, as a couple examples, uh, the battle versus Lord Blazer from Wild Arms 2. Um, the second battle theme from Breath of Fire. And uh, a theme I discovered many, many years later was called Your Fighting Eyes Are Always Beautiful from uh, a game on Myst uh, called Mystic Arc, um, which uh, I discovered that from, if you guys remember, uh, I think a few years ago I was streaming playing this weird, crappy, um, uh, uh, fan-made Kirby game that was made in Java by some of the people from uh, Kinder Spirits websites. Um, 
uh, Kirby's Rainbow Resort. Uh, that music, the one that you're hearing right now, this uh, this theme from Mystic Arc, I had that for years and did not know what it was originally from until like uh, probably like over a decade later. Somebody on Tumblr actually helped me figure out that it was from a game called Mystic Arc. Um, but uh, yeah, so a lot of great JRPG music. Again, you'll probably hear a lot of that in. Um, uh, uh, in the TTA episodes, if you go back and listen, like, a, a ton of the random, like, cool JRPG, uh, battle themes and BGM that I used were, I, I mean, even technically, Final Fantasy VII, I never played any of those Final Fantasy games, really, uh, as a kid either, I just knew the soundtracks, um, you know, either by just, you know, searching for stuff or people recommending me themes for stuff, and, uh, and often if people would just, like, give me something, it would find its way into a TTA episode at some point because I just enjoyed it. Speaking of JRPGs, and in this case, uh, ones that I um, uh, that I actually have played, <laughs> and uh, this was a big deal, was Kingdom Hearts, uh, absolutely, and kind of cool story about uh, Kingdom Hearts. In addition to, of course, um, you know, uh, downloading the MIDI's and downloading eventually the MP3s of the Kingdom Hearts music and using quite a bit of that. Um, so, funny story uh, about both the music of. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, uh, the first Final Mix, as well as um, the music for Kingdom Hearts 2. So, uh, Final Mix had come out in Japan. Uh, at the time, we did not get the Final Mix versions of Kingdom Hearts games uh, in the U.S., um, not until they did the HD collections many, many years later, and th those were the versions that we got. But um, one day, my dad and I, as we've talked about in some of the, the curb logs that uh, good old Datafer has been on, um, we used to buy a lot of cool stuff on eBay, and one thing that we found was somebody made a cool videotape where uh, they recorded all of the new cutscenes and boss battles and content from uh, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. So that included um, like the extra cutscene with Sephiroth, the extra cutscenes with Riku kind of going around the world of darkness and you can't hear his voice, he's not speaking. Um, the, uh, the battle with, uh, the unknown, as we knew him back then, the organ mysterious, uh, person in the black coat, which turned out to be Xemnas. Um, the expanded ending with the, the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 2 as well. And, uh, so this videotape had all that stuff on it, and I watched that video a thousand goddamn times. Uh, and it was so cool to me. And, um, on the letter, um... The envelope of, of the letter where we mailed in uh, the payment for um, the auction that we won to buy, or I don't even think it was an auction, I think it was just you could just buy it. Um, I drew some cool little pencil sketches of uh, Sora, Cloud, and Sephiroth, I think it was. And um, the guy that made the videotape sent a little bonus uh, along with it. They said, hey, love the artwork that you did. That was so cool of you. Uh, hey, I, I tossed in a little bonus for you. So they burned on a CD the four additional music tracks uh, that were only in the final mix version of the game, at least in Japan specifically. So they had uh, Disappeared, which was the unknown boss battle theme, uh, Night on Bald Mountain, which was um, only to, for the American version uh, of Kingdom Hearts 1 and the final mix when you fight Chernabog, um, One Winged Angel from Sephiroth, because I think in the base version of the Japanese release of Kingdom Hearts 1, I think that Sephiroth wasn't uh, in that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, another side, another story, deep dive from the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 2 at the end of Final Mix if you get the best ending. And I listened to that CD a million freaking times. And as along with that videotape, because I loved all of that music. And I think that not only is it amazing, amazing, amazing music from... Uh, you know, Kingdom Hearts in general, which is a series filled with incredible music in general, absolutely. Um, but I think, uh, I think that because of that CD and that videotape that made it, like, you know, so special that I, it, it, like, you know, kind of triplicated my love for those tunes in particular. And, um, yeah, I mean, still to this day, I think that, uh, uh, Another Side, Another Story is absolutely still one of my favorite pieces of video game music of all goddamn time, and I live for every single remix of it, um, that has ever existed across the entire Kingdom Hearts series at this point. Um, and even when I just hear the original version, like, I remember in, um, Birth by Sleep when you fight against, uh, Zigbar, and, and that's the BGM for when you fight him, I think, as Aqua, uh, even that moment, or, or... Even though 358 Days is um, mostly silly, I love the fact that the final boss is fighting Riku 
uh, in the city, and that theme plays. I love that. I really, really love that they use that. Uh, I'm even, I'm honestly, I'm getting kind of teary-eyed even just, like, talking about this tune in particular, because it's that goddamn good. Um, so, uh, and, and on the note of, uh, of the, the later Kingdom Hearts stuff, so, um, I remember, I actually downloaded, uh, this is, again, in that era of me downloading MP3s and stuff, I downloaded the, um, Kingdom Hearts 2 soundtrack, uh, a decent while before the game came out in the U.S., so I kind of spoiled myself on, uh, the um, the OST of Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, well before I actually played the game, and I was watching videos and stuff of it uh, ahead of time when uh, the Japanese version came out and people were uploading like footage of the boss fights and stuff. This is like the very early days of, uh, of YouTube as well, actually, um, and uh, KH Org and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, the really early days of that, and that's also why I used quite a bit of it in uh, the TTA episodes, uh, kind of towards the end. Um, in fact, I wanted to use, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. I know that it plays when you're fighting against, uh, Captain Barbosa, uh, in the Pirates of the Caribbean 1 level in Kingdom Hearts 2. I wanted to use that theme, uh, for the battle between Alpha and Redemption Game Crazed, uh, in Season 3. Uh, or, of, of, uh, of TTA, and for some reason, that was one of those MP3s that I just could not actually import into uh, Flash. Like for some for some reason, and I know now it was like a bitrate issue or some nonsense like that, but uh, I, I realized that um, uh, that there were certain cho choices that I made on the music because I wasn't actually able to use uh, the songs that I wanted. Same thing, actually, on the same note of Kingdom Hearts. I, I did use um, the uh, uh, one of the Ansem battle themes from Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, I forget what it's called. It's, it's the one that starts with... Da, na, 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 na. I used that theme for uh, the battle with um, Kagemamaru, the, uh, the, the Shadow Guard Beast, um, with... Uh, uh, in, in the season one finale of TTA because I couldn't get um, any of the original music that I wanted to get in the Flash file. Uh, and actually, one of them I couldn't even find in the first place because it was from a movie, uh, so it was just a little bit more complicated than my, you know, early 2000s internet uh, sleuthing brain was able to even uh, track down in the first place, unfortunately. But, um, but actually... Uh, because it was kind of just coming down to working with whatever I had access to that actually led quite nicely into um, the next sort of bit of uh, uh, what kind of music I was getting big into and what I was using in TTA as well. So, I always loved Sonic music. Um, always, always, always. But, um, there was something magical to me about the soundtrack of Sonic 06. Um, even before the game was out, and well before, obviously, everyone knew that it was, you know, an abomination of a game, unfortunately, <laughs> um, that I still do have kind of a weird love-hate, uh, kind of attachment to, but, um, Sonic 06's, uh, uh, kind of early promotional material had, uh, quite a bit of new music, um, kind of put out there ahead of time, um, when the game was kind of on its way to coming out, uh, later that year at the very tail end of Son of, of, of 06. Um, but, uh, I, um, uh, I was obsessed with even just the little tiny bit of music that we heard, which at that point was Kingdom Valley, uh, Crisis City, and His World. That's all we had to go on, but I played those little bits of, because on the, like, the Sonic, uh, 06 promotional website, I played those little previews of the, of the Sonic music, like, a thousand times from the game. Uh, and then eventually, when the game came out, once again, I did download the OST, um, and, uh, listened to quite a- not all of it, but quite a bit of it before it actually played the game, and, uh, around that same time, I was using quite a bit of it in, um, the- the last batch of TTA episodes, um, so the final, um, like, the final few episodes of TTA, uh, have a lot of Sonic 06 music in it, because I- that was just 100% my obsession. Um, at that time. And, um, yeah, and actually even, uh, close to the beginning of, um, uh, college too, it kind of, you know, appeared into that a little bit. Um, because I remember, uh, his world, something about that song, man, 
uh, it, it's still, it's magical for me. It's, uh, it's still the theme to this very day, as of, like, yesterday when I was coming back from, like, Starbucks or something. Um, it's, the, it's the theme of me running to cross a street before the light turns red. <laughs> of, of me. And uh, for years, I mean, it's been so influential on me, that song in particular, that um, the fact that it was, uh, it was a big inspiration for the, um, um, the kind of style that I wanted Wes to compose, um, Heroes Don't Ask Questions, for, uh, for Tom 2011. Um, that was, that was one thing, uh, for sure. And for years, it actually taught me to be a better singer because I would practice singing it over and over and over because I wanted to, to learn how to do that song. And there was a time where I could, uh, actually hit those notes. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, I, I no longer can, unfortunately. But, um, uh, but I did accomplish a long, long running dream of, uh, of wanting to do a cover of it, uh, and that was in no small part thanks to uh, Nathaniel and uh, Jameson when I did the um, the cover of that a, a year or two ago now, uh, where I got to actually have Jason and, and Pete uh, voice their, their respective hedgehogs for the trio uh, on part of the uh, instrumental break, which was incredible. I was very happy I got to have them be part of that. So, um, But... Uh, yeah, I, I still love that. That's still a, a, a personal favorite um, a piece of video game music. Uh, very, very much so. I, I love his world. That's, that goes down as one of my absolute favorites for sure. And um, similarly, uh, by the time that... Uh, oh, well, actually, here, I, I won't skip ahead too much into um, uh, the end of college, but... Um, the, uh, the next kind of major thing uh, in terms of a music obsession in college... Uh, and this will probably come as no surprise to people throughout 2007 and 2008, but it was the Super Smash Bros. Brawl soundtrack. Um, yeah, I, uh, despite my, uh, frustration, uh, and grumbling with, uh, Brawl Taunts and just the whole, like, Nintendo parody era of me when I was, uh, you know, in my kind of Newgrounds heyday and everything, um, the soundtrack of Brawl, I think, is just an absolute staple of video game history because of the fact that all of these... Uh, amazing tunes got to be in one game together in, in a single thing. Like, I, I still can't even fully believe that. Um, and even now I look at, I mean, the, even more so the, the um, soundtracks of Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate were like, I can't believe that they got some of the, the tunes that they got and all these songs and everything. But um, yeah, the main theme of, uh, of Brawl uh, is, uh, I, I mean, you know, I always have trouble deciding which main Smash Brothers theme is my favorite. Um, truly, I don't, I don't know. I love the Brawl theme with the vocals. I love the Smash 4 theme as well. I love the Smash Ultimate vocal theme. I love the Melee theme. Like, uh, I never can decide which one is my, like, gun to my head. Like, what is your favorite, favorite, favorite? Like, it's, it's really difficult for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, and once again... Brawl came out in Japan uh, before it came out of the U.S., so therefore um, the OST came out beforehand, and I had all the MP3s of that over time, which was great. And um, you know, <laughs> so that that was that was a big thing for me for sure. And uh, yeah, all throughout college, I was I was listening to um, you know the hundred, the, you know, hundreds of uh, you know tracks from the, from that that game alone while I was working on, um, you know, all my different video game, pro you know, the parody projects that I was doing throughout and my school work and everything. And probably even during, uh, the balancing act thesis film that I did back then. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was a lot. That was a, a lot of that stuff. Um, and, uh, actually towards the end of college, um, because, uh, or, or actually quite, uh, past it, was uh, when Sonic Generations was uh, on its way to coming out, because that was 2011, that was the same year that I graduated. <laughs> and um, I remember uh, Sonic Generations was another game that I was like really, really fucking jazzed about and super excited about, and especially to hear all the new remixes that we were gonna get um, from that game in particular. And um, I have this very specific memory of listening to uh, when when the OST came out ahead of when the game was fully released. I think it might have leaked or something, or maybe the um, the actual physical CD uh, came out, um, you know, somewhere ahead of time or something. I don't know, but um, I remember listening to the modern remixes of um, Crisis Core and uh, Rooftop Run and uh, Planet Wisp, 
and just being so unbelievably excited for that game to come out. And it is still probably my favorite Sonic game. I'm very excited about the um, the Shadow uh, version that's um, uh, going to be coming out uh, with the, the extra Shadow stuff um, happening towards uh, later in the year. But uh, I remember being on a train, I think, uh, uh, coming to the city for something, and I was listening to uh, the Generations OST before even the game came out, and I was like just so enamored by it. And that is also, that by itself is an incredible uh, video game OST, um, for sure. And um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, the, the sad thing is, it's actually kind of difficult for me to remember um, specific game soundtracks that really impacted me in like the last like 15 years since college was over. What has remained consistent is uh, both uh, actually Mario, going all the way back to the beginning, Mario and Sonic. Consistently, the soundtracks of each of those new major games that have come out um, over the last you know 15, however many years, um, every time. The OSTs of those games are like an event for the musical uh, like obsession part of my brain, without question. And uh, I, you know, even now, actually, like I, at the time that I'm recording this, I, I've only listened to a little tiny bit of it because I'm trying to um, wait until I start playing it with my friends and actually hearing it in context. But the OST for Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door, um, the remake, like, oh. I am as excited to hear the remixes of that music as I am, uh, or as I was to hear the remixes of the uh, Mario RPG uh, uh, music from, from the remake that we got last year as well. Like, my god. They just go off. The fact that, that Mario and Sonic, um, you know, for being like you know, some of the top, top, uh, you know, video game franchises in the world still, uh, the fact that. Um, you know, they, they do get, like, the best of the best of the best music quality and the fact that they, you know, they get full orchestras and incredible, you know, composers like Koji Kondo and um, uh, Tomoyo Otani and guys like that. Like, ah! Uh, uh, and I have heard a little bit of the Thousand Year Door remake uh, soundtrack, and I do adore what I have heard so far. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah, but but the, the thing is... Um, like the the Sonic Lost World uh, OST, um, which I'm playing right here. This uh, that that was uh, an influence actually on um, some of the Tom 2011 music I can recall um, as I was going into that series, uh, particularly the second season. And um, uh, but but to be honest, the the era of when I was still living in New York with my folks for a few years before I moved to LA uh, and then into moving here. Uh, it's actually a little bit of a blur. I don't remember like too many like really. There were there were other like random you know games that I played that would have like uh, you know great music that I would I would listen to um, and like one or two songs that I'd pick out that were like ooh that's like my favorite from this or whatever and um, I really like cling on to that and everything. But uh, it, it was it was kind of just scattered at that point. It wasn't. Um, uh, it, it wasn't specific to, like, this entire set, but, or if it was, I'm sure probably at some point, but I don't remember specific ones. Um, I think because I was so focused on other stuff at that point, and maybe, like, the magic of that was kind of changing for me a little bit, um, as I was, you know, shifting my focus in different ways. But, um, one thing in particular changed, uh, by the time that I did move to LA, and, uh, that was by the time that I, uh, discovered good old Silva Gunner. Um, that was actually kind of the next big stage of influence in terms of video game music for me because it was a new spin on old stuff that I grew up with. Uh, so to hear, like, you know, different, um, games, uh, soundtracks done in different, uh, sound font, like, like, styles, um, or even, like, songs from other, like, you know, stuff that I liked, you know, or, you know, discovering new songs from other things that I hadn't heard before. Um, like, I've learned about, like, all many, like, like all these other different, uh, artists and stuff that, you know, the, the, the whole community, all the different Silva Gunner, uh, artists that have done, that have contributed to that channel over the last... God knows how many years at this point. Um, I discovered them uh, at least seven years ago at this point. And it's been hard to stay caught up, but I do try and listen to a lot of that stuff as much as I can um, over the years. And uh, I've built up like this just 
tremendous playlist of uh, you know all these different songs that I've liked as I've listened to uh, different things from Silver Gunner over the years. And, uh, and I had the opportunity to actually work with um, a couple folks, uh, Nick and MTH and uh, Dante, uh, that uh, all went on to work on um, the, uh, the Tome RPG, actually. Uh, and the fact that I was even able to license um, the, A Battle of Grand Proportions, which was an original tune that they had. Uh, and when I was having Dante do the final boss battle uh, theme for fighting against Zeto in the RPG, I literally had um, the uh, King for a Day theme as an influence on that which Dante composed, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or at least did the arrangement of I can't quite remember. It's been a little while. But uh, yeah, so Silver Gunner ended up uh, being like a big habitual thing for me in terms of my uh, music listening experience and, uh, and also an influence creatively on um, all the stuff that uh, I was even kind of producing at that time. So... Um, yeah, I don't want to say that the, the, the magic certainly hasn't died in terms of uh, how music, um, uh, how important uh, video game music is to me, but it's changed in terms of how it's influenced me and how it kind of like fits into my life. Um, you know, I, I now because especially now that like um, what I'm doing with my life is so different. Like, but you know, the, the free time that I have for even just listening to music on its own uh, has actually kind of dwindled, to be honest. So sometimes. Um, the only real few opportunities that I ever have to just straight listen to video game music on its own are if I'm alone and have nothing else to do, if I'm just relaxing or whatever, or if I'm like driving somewhere um, and don't need to have GPS on. Um, that's about it. Um, but I still, uh, there are certain, um, you know, pieces of video game music that have lasted for all this time, for, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, that um, are, uh, you know, le like such such a tremendous like definition of who I am because because of how much they influenced me and how much they changed my tastes and you know and they and they still to this day like some of those have not gone out of style for me I, I love them just as much as I did back then if not maybe more um, but uh, yeah so I, uh, uh, I I and you know and the fact that like. Still to this day, like, I have to imagine we're going to get, like, I mean, even thinking again, like, the, the Thousand Year Door remake, we're going to get probably some more awesome remixes for the Shadow the Hedgehog um, expansion of Sonic Generations coming up pretty soon. I have no doubt that we'll get whatever, like, the next major Mario game uh, will come out with um, the, uh, the next Nintendo system, whatever it's going to be. Um, you know, so those two kind of old faithfuls will always be there. Uh, <laughs> But, um, and Silver Gutter doesn't seem to ever run out of new stuff because there's new people always joining and continuing to, you know, add stuff to the channel on a daily basis, basically. <laughs> so, and, um, and even just recently, having played through Omori, and there's already some, uh, some good new, uh, themes in there that I, I really enjoyed, like, um, you know, video game music is, and, and the fact that now I was able to, you know, while working with these other amazing artists like Wes and Yoav and Nick, um, and CN and, and uh, Plaster Brain and Steve Kelly, all of these guys, I was able to help bring a great video game soundtrack to the world by working with these guys that are, um, you know, incredibly massively talented um, that uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to work with over time. Um, and many, many others, you know, many other uh, amazing musicians that I'm excited to continue to work with. Um, you know, going into balancing act and stuff like that, and uh, maybe other, you know, projects moving forward and stuff. So, um, I love video game music, and uh, it is still, uh, it is still to this day, uh, a, a massive part of my my life as a whole. And uh, as I imagine, it probably is for a lot of y'all out there. So, um, with that said, uh, I think that that covers pretty much the whole chronicle of my life in terms of uh, <laughs> a lot of my favorites. I'm sure there are probably many, 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 many more that uh, I I'd forgotten. And uh, the playlist that I'm going to provide over here um, is by no means a definitive list of everything, but it's just the stuff that I played while recording this, just in case uh, y'all out there want to listen to it. So um, that's going to do it, but this was a really fun one and, uh, actually, wow, filled up almost an entire hour. So thank you again, Alorius, um, for, uh, suggesting that. And thank you to everybody here in the, uh, 
the Discord chat who's uh, listening in as I'm recording this ahead of time. Um, and uh, thank you all for listening. Once again, if you would uh, if you would like to help support my future uh, projects that video game inspired music will certainly be a part of, um, please consider checking out my Patreon. Um, and uh, you can come out here and uh, hang out with us a couple times a month and play games and share fan art and see all the stuff that I'm working on ahead of time. So uh, until then, everybody, I'll see you all in the next one. I uh, hope you're having a lovely rest of your uh, tail end of May here. Cutting it a little bit close, but uh, it was fun. And uh, I've been a little bit light on content, but I'll be getting back to streaming very soon. So look forward to that. So, All right, folks, uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Thanks a bunch. And continue to listen to amazing, amazing video game music. Bye-bye.